Hi, Terry here, and welcome back to Times Gone Tech. This video is making a propellant, black powder propellant, for antique muzzle loaders at home. Going back and revisiting a series of videos I did a year or two ago. And uh, I'm calling this one Part 1B, or Part 1 Supplemental, rather than Part 2, because it's really just following up on some of the things I talked about in the first video, which you might think was a little too long to start with. You should have seen the original. It was about an hour's worth of film. So um, I had some problems with my computer. As you know, battery died. We got a new battery order. It came in. Computer started right back up. No problem. But the video was too long. Uh, YouTube wouldn't let me upload it. So I, uh, I'd cut it down to a little over 30 minutes. And I took another 10 minutes out of it, basically. And uh, it uploaded. Problem is, some of that 10 minutes was... Stuff that I kind of wanted to leave in. So, uh, yeah, I got it uploaded, as you saw. And then I thought I'd come back and follow up with Part 1B, Supplemental. So, the third pound of black powder is now in the ball mill and is running. And while the first one was running, a couple of questions came up at work. I was talking with some friends about it. And uh, one of those questions was about mill time. And I'd said that I mill for 24 hours, and somebody asked, well, why 24 hours? Well, I tried 12, 24, 36, and 48, and 24 gave me the best results. Only, when I went back and looked at the videos that I filmed, not necessarily what I published, because again, I have to cut a lot of this stuff out, but when I looked at what I filmed, I, did, I didn't like the results. I didn't like the, the lack of controls. There were, there were other variables involved in it that could have affected the performance of the powder. So I decided I'm going to go back and try that again. I milled the first pound for 24 hours. And then I decided to mill the second one, pound B, we'll call it, pound A, 24 hours, pound B, for 48 hours. Now, everything about that those powders is exactly the same. Same mix ratio, same charcoal from the same retort, same batch, you know, everything was exactly the same. Dehydrated them the same, mixed them the same. The only difference was one was milled for 24 and one was milled for 48. Okay, then a question came up about the mix ratio. Why 75, 15, 10? And we got to talking about that and asking questions like, who even came up with this formula? Who decided that 75, 15, 10 is what everybody should use? I don't know. I doubt if anybody does. How it became 75, 15, 10? Well, there are other mixes that other people use, and a lot of them. I don't want to go into all of it. But I thought, well, why not try what they, some people are calling a sporting mix, or a sporty mix, you could call it. Um, 77, 13, 10. 77 parts potassium nitrate, 13 parts charcoal, 10 parts sulfur. So we're going to lean it out a little. We're going to increase the oxidizer, decrease the fuel a little bit. Now, it seems to be a very popular mix among at least YouTubers who are making their own black powder. A lot of people are using that ratio. So, pound C. Again, everything else exactly the same as pounds A and pound B, except... Half of it has been milled, or is milling, sorry, half of it is milling for 24 hours, and half of it will mill for 48 hours. So what I'm going to end up with is one batch of 75, 15, 10. Let's back up a little bit, because another question came up, which I'm also testing out. And that is, I use lead media in my mill, a ball mill. Why? Well, it's dense. It makes a good milling media. It also, it's non-conductive. It won't generate a spark, and it won't build up and hold a static electric charge, like some other materials like steel and glass will. Well, what about brass? Somebody at work asked me. I don't know. Oh. So, I went on the internet and did some research, and there are some other YouTubers who are adamant critics of using lead media for making propellant for black powder antique muzzle loaders. And 
I'm with them right up to a certain point, and then I kind of sidestep away from them. Now, the idea here is that as the, this lead media is rolling around in the, in the ball mill, little microscopic bits and flakes of it are being knocked off. That gets into the powder and contaminates it. Then when you put the powder in the barrel of your muzzle loader and you fire it, the heat in that combustion melts the lead. It fuses with the sulfur to form lead sulfides, which is then blown out the barrel into the smoke. You're breathing that in, and that's a potential health hazard. Okay, I can see that. It, it makes sense. It's, it's reasonable. But how do we know for a fact that's even happening? How do we know for a fact that lead is actually being knocked off of the balls, little microscopic pieces? I mean, it sounds reasonable, but is it actually happening? Has anyone ever tested it to find out? Has anyone, anyone ever ran a batch of black powder with lead media, then sent a sample off to a chemistry lab to have it analyzed and see how much lead might be in it? I don't know of anybody who has done that. Actually, I can't afford to do it right now myself either, but it's an interesting idea. And I'm not arguing against this. I'm not at this point. I'm not saying that's not happening. I just, I'd like to know, is it really? Because if it is, then yeah, I can go along with the health hazard thing. And that could be a reason by itself to not use lead. But let's find out for sure if that's actually happening. And then is the amount of lead that we're being exposed to above allowable limits? Well, if you want to stay above allowable limits or below allowable limits, that's kind of a personal choice, I guess. Some people think any lead is too much, and they're probably right. So I'm not arguing with that, okay? I'm with that, up to when they start talking about how, and the lead causes worse fouling of the firearm. That's where I take a little sidestep over here, because I've been using lead media in my ball mill, and in my admittedly informal, uncontrolled, subjective testing, my black powder is at least as powerful as a commercial grade powder, GoX, which again has its own critics claiming it's down at the bottom end. I don't have a problem with it, but a lot of people seem to. But anyway, my crow up there, if you can't hear it from the microphone, there's a crow up there in the pine trees yelling at me. So my black powder tests out, admittedly subjective testing, at least as powerful as GoX, commercial grade, and maybe even a little bit cleaner than GoX. Now, okay, my testing has been subjective, maybe biased. So let's be conservative and, and open and let's say it's not any cleaner than GoX, but it's as clean as GoX. Well, if I'm using lead media and I'm assuming GoX doesn't just because of the bad publicity they get if it ever came out that they were, but if they're using brass and I'm using lead, then why is my powder turning out at least as good as theirs? Why isn't mine dirtier than theirs? Again, I'm not arguing with this idea about it being dirtier because the people who are saying this, they clearly know more about black powder than I do. But I don't understand what's going on here. My powder, having used lead, should be burning a lot dirtier than it is. Okay, so what are we going to do? Well, I've got some brass media ordered. We'll be in on Monday. This is Saturday. So it'll be in on Monday and I've got just enough eastern red cedar charcoal left from the same batch this other stuff was made from to make up one more pound. So I'm going to do one more pound of 771310, okay, an eastern red cedar charcoal milled for 48 hours. Because I've got some 771310 milled for 48 hours using lead, and I've got some 751510 milled for 48 hours using lead. So the only thing I'm going to change is from lead media to brass media. Everything else stays exactly the same. And let's see if there is any noticeable difference. I had this wild haired theory, which I'm sure I'm going to be proven wrong, but I had this wild theory that the reason my powder tests out equal to GoX is because I'm using lead. If I'd used brass, 
mine would be like way better than Go X. And it's the lead that's pulling it down equal to Go X. <laughs> well, yeah, we'll see how that goes. But anyway, I'm curious to see if it makes any difference. Um, if it does, and even if it doesn't, okay, you know, even if it, the, everything turns out exactly the same, just that health risk alone would be worth getting rid of the lid. If the power and the performance and the fouling all stay exactly the same with brass, that's still a good argument to change over to brass. So we'll, we'll find out and see what goes on with that. Compressing the mold, uh, granulating, I'll be talking about that in part two when I start that. I also wanted to talk just very briefly, and you can see why a lot of this stuff got cut out, about the charcoal. The charcoal is the fuel that burns in the black powder, and it's probably the single most important ingredient because that, that's the, the fuel. I mean, if you put crappy gas in your car, you're going to get crappy performance, right? So you want good performance, you got to buy good gas. Same thing with charcoal. If you want good, high-performance gunpowder, you got to have good, high-performance charcoal. I'm using Eastern Red Cedar pet bedding, which I can buy at Walmart, two pound blocks. It's like $5. I mean, it's, it's a huge bale. It's very light. And it's been giving me good performance. Generally speaking, the lighter and softer the wood, the better the finished gunpowder. There are some exceptions. But generally speaking, if you go with that, you'll usually get out, turn out with better mix than otherwise. In other words, if you use willow as opposed to oak, you'll get better gunpowder than you will if you use oak. Okay, I'm using Eastern Red Cedar. Now, GoX uses soft maple, and Swiss uses alder buckthorn. Now, there's a, a hardness rating called Janka that um, it, it's arbitrary. I mean, it's just something somebody made up. Presumably what they do is they push a probe into the wood to a certain depth and how much force it takes to push it down in there, that's your Janka hardness rating. That's how that stuff's usually done. So, alder buckthorn and soft maple have a hardness rating each of around a thousand. Now, they vary the scale, but there's an overlapping area in there where right around a thousand, they can both fit in that envelope. So, soft maple and alder buckthorn can have the same hardness rating. So why is Swiss so much better than GoX if that's the only difference? There's got to be something else going on there. That's why we're testing the mix ratio and the milling medium as well. But I did some checking on different types of wood. And as it turns out, um, cottonwood, which has been tested out by other YouTubers and works very well, has a hardness rating of around 800, 850, I think. And if I'm wrong with these numbers, forgive me. Don't, don't leave me any kind of nasty gram. I'm going by memory. My point is that cottonwood is softer than either soft maple or alder buckthorn. So is southern white pine. So is balsa wood. So is balsam poplar. They're all down around 800, 900 on the rating. Balsa is down around 450, I think. So you think balsa would be just bitching black powder. Other people have tried it and made really great powder. And other people have tried it and didn't turn out so great. It could have been something else involved, though. So I'm going to be experimenting over probably this next few months, maybe you know, maybe interviewing in the next season about different materials for charcoal because I'm using the last of my eastern red cedar that I have ready. I've got some more wood, but do I want to burn it into charcoal or do I want to try something else first? I don't think I'm going to try something else. Different different materials: pine cones, southern white pine bark. Uh, vines, old, we used to call them wild vines when I was out in the forest. And when I was younger, we called them jungle vines. Like you see in the Tarzan movies, they'd be swinging on these vines. Well, yeah, we have them here hanging out of the trees. They're not grape vines, they're just big old wild vines, jungle vines, hanging down from the trees. So I thought I might harvest some of those, a little bit of that, and try that, and some different stuff. So this will be my third series batch. Of black powder to shoot in my guns that I'm using with the ball mill method that I'm using. And I'm already up, as far as I can see, to a commercial grade, easily equal to a Go X. Not, not a Swiss, but a Go X. So let's see where it goes from there. Okay, end. Propellant four, antique muzzle loaders, part one, B, supplemental.
See you for part two.